So one of the most important topics that you learn when you first start to study algebra is this topic of functions, and that's what this little video is about. And the question here says the following, what is not okay? So hopefully you can understand what this question is talking about. If you don't understand, of course, I'll explain all this in just one second. But if you understand functions and you absolutely must be able to understand functions in algebra, then I think you should be able to figure this problem out. I don't want to give you any hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity to answer this all on your own. But if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to review exactly what's going on here step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so what is the question? Well, let me explain it a, little, a bit further. So uh, what I'm asking is what number uh, or numbers is not okay to plug into this function? Now, maybe all numbers are okay to plug into this function, but maybe there are some numbers that you cannot. Okay, so that effectively is the question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Well, the correct answer is X cannot be uh, well, actually, I have to kind of fix this up here. Not x is equal to. X cannot be equal to negative one half. If you know what's going on here, that is fantastic because functions are tremendously important in algebra. And this is not that difficult. So if you don't really know what's going on, well, I'll teach you basically effectively uh, a little bit about functions. Again, this is a full, complete topic in algebra. But uh, here is the question again, right? So what is not okay? Well, I think uh, a good place to start here is to look at what is okay. So let's uh, uh, kind of take a quick look at how a function works. Now, again, functions are a huge topic in algebra. And, uh, you know, you can kind of identify a function with this little notation right here. I could spend, you know, uh, an hour or two easily uh, telling you what a function is. Uh, we can go into all different sorts of uh, aspects. Of course, all these things you do need to understand. But effectively, a function is a rule. Okay, It's a rule where we have an input. So in other words, we get to input something into our little rule here. Now, notice here I have f of x. So whatever I input here, and this variable is x, I'm going to replace this x for whatever I plug into the function. Now, a good little model for a function is what we call a function machine, or it's just a nice little model. So in other words, there's an input. So in this particular uh, function, f of x, that's how we would state this, we're going to plug 5 into the function machine, and then, of course, we want to see what we're going to get out. Okay, so can we plug 5 into this function? Well, we absolutely can. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Again, we're going to replace this x with the 5, and this x right here, once we have a 5 here, we're going to replace this x with a 5. Okay, so it's going to look like this. And uh, when we do this in algebra, this is called evaluating the function, or we want to find f of 5. Okay, uh, so let me just kind of go back here. Uh, if I told you find f of 5 of this function, well, then you would do this work right here. Okay, so uh, we're going to replace this x with a 5. So remember, this was x and this was x. So we just replace uh, the variables here with those respect with the respective number, which of course is five. And now we're just going to do this lovely basic math right here. So this is going to be three over uh, two times five is ten. Ten plus one is eleven. So this is just three over eleven. So f of five is three over eleven. Okay, so no problems there. You can plug in four. You could probably plug in a whole bunch of other numbers, but is there a number that we cannot plug into this function and just do what we just did? Well, indeed there is. We cannot plug in, again, uh, negative one-half, right? Now, but why? Well, of course, I'm going to explain this right now. Now, the numbers that you can plug into a function, in other words, what numbers are okay? Like, of course, 5, right? And there's other numbers, 4, uh, 10. All these sets of numbers, and this is an infinite set of numbers, is called the domain of the function. 
So if you're asked to find the domain of a function, what we're really asking or really looking for is all the numbers that are okay, the set of numbers that um, we can plug into the function and get an actual number out. So remember here when we had f of 5, we plugged it into this function, we got a uh, number 3 over 11 as our output value. Okay, so again, the numbers that we can plug into a function are called the domain, the set of numbers. And of course, there'll be an infinite amount of numbers. Now that all the numbers that come out of that function, if we plug in the entire domain into the function, all the uh, numbers that are generated, okay, the output, if you will, is called the range, okay? So the range is dependent upon the domain, okay? So the uh, domain is what we call the independent variable, and then the range is the dependent variable. Again, I can get really uh, deep into this. Hopefully, you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. But uh, this question is, let's find the domain of this function. Okay, so now that we understand what the domain is, what is not allowed? Okay, so apparently there are some numbers that potentially you cannot plug into a function. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. And here are the two situations that you cannot have when we're talking about functions under the real number system. So this is a, a really important. So all these X numbers, all the numbers that we're gonna plug into our function are going to be members. This is a little fancy math notation. This uh, right here says X is an element of the set of real numbers. Don't uh, get uh, too you know, um, uh, discouraged if you don't understand this, but that just basically means that, hey, all these numbers X's are real numbers, okay? So in other words, here is our number line. And of course we have all these lovely integers, whole numbers, negative one, negative two. We got all these uh, positive, negative decimals, irrational numbers, rational numbers, et cetera, et cetera. These are the real numbers. So these are all the numbers that we get to kind of select uh, from to plug into our function. Okay, so we're, again, we're dealing with the real number system. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these conditions. These are two conditions that you cannot uh, have, or you have to stay away from when we're talking about functions. So any number x that you plug into your function, okay, that causes any of these two conditions to happen, uh, these x's you cannot have, okay? So you cannot have these x situ or any number x that causes this situation. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at this first condition. If you plug in a value, okay, some number x, uh, into your function and you end up with a zero in the denominator of some sort of fraction, well, this number is not allowed, okay? It's not part of the domain because you can never have zero uh, in the denominator, okay? So this is the first uh, situation you have to stay away from. So when you're dealing with a function that has a fraction, you have to be on high alert to be like, okay, um, are there any numbers that could cause a zero in the denominator? If there are numbers that could cause a zero in the denominator, those numbers you have to take out of the set of, uh, you gotta take them out of the domain. Okay, they're actually, well, not, they're not part of the domain, so you gotta make sure you explicitly exclude them, okay? All right, so how about uh, this other situation? Well, if we have any numbers that causes a negative um, under a square root, in other words, if I plug in like, let's say f of seven, and you get a square root of negative 16, well, this is a problem. You cannot have this situation. Remember, the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number or a complex number. So that's under the complex number system, not the real number system. So we're only talking about the set of real numbers. Now, when you get into more advanced math, uh, you'll have other questions where they say, find the domain under the set of complex numbers. But for most of you out there that are studying First, second year algebra, uh, you know, all your function questions are going to just um, pretty much be related to the set of real numbers. Okay, so hopefully you understand everything I'm talking about here. So how can we apply this to answer this question? Well, we're going to take a look at that. Now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. 
uh, look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so what is not okay? Well, you know, let's take a look at this function. Well, we have a function. Uh, do we have a square root situation in this function? In other words, if I had a square root of uh, uh, 3x here, well, then I have to be on the lookout for this square root of a negative situation. I don't have uh, that scenario, although you definitely could. Okay, There's plenty of functions that could cause, uh, matter of fact, let's just make something up. You could have 3x plus, uh, well, let me use something a little bit different, uh, 7, and you could have square root of 3x plus 7 over 2x plus 1. Now you have two conditions here. Here I have to worry about the negative underneath the square root, and here I have to worry about the zero in the denominator. Okay, so uh, this is definitely a type of question you'll have to be able to answer, but yeah, I made this problem nice and easy because I am talking about basic algebra here. So we're looking... I don't see any square roots, but I do have a fraction, and I have a situation here where I have to be very careful by uh, not creating or putting a value of x such that this whole thing down here will be equal to zero. So what value of x could cause 2x plus 1, all this, uh, this expression right here in the denominator, to be equal to zero? Well, let's go ahead and determine that by simply saying, okay, 2x plus 1, when are you equal to zero? We'll just set up a nice, lovely equation. So 2x plus 1, uh, you are equal to zero when? Well, what value of x? Well, let's just solve the equation. So here we're going to go ahead and subtract uh, 1 from both sides of the equation. I'm going to get 2x is equal to negative 1. Now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to negative 1 half. So what does that mean? Well, if I plug in f of uh, um, negative one half into my function, this right here, this negative one half, this, that's going to create a zero situation in the denominator. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right here. So f of negative one half, if I told you to evaluate this function for negative one half, you would have this right here. And of course we have to do this multiplication. Two times negative one half is negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. That is not good, okay? This would make this uh, function just kind of really, you know, uh, unhappy. Okay, so how would we define the domain of this function then? So here is a kind of a typical um, way of defining the domain of the function. That's really what we're doing here is figuring out what's not okay. So everything um, else is okay. So the domain of this function could be described. There's all different sorts of ways you can do this. Well, different types of nota uh, notation. You could say, all real numbers, okay, uh, and of course I should be able to be a little bit better like this, all uh, uh, values of x that are elements of the real numbers, in other words, members of the L of the real numbers, and if you don't understand sets, basically here's all the real numbers, and x could be a member of all the real numbers, so all values of x, really I can kind of even do this kind of crazy deal, but I'm going to keep this extra, extra simple here. See, I just kind of have to stop myself sometimes because we are talking about basic algebra. So the domain would be all real numbers except for x cannot be equal to negative one half, okay? All right, so again, there's different ways you can express the domain, but we'll just kind of just leave it like this. So the domain, uh, i.e. what numbers are okay, okay, to plug into this uh, function, well, all real numbers except this one right here. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, don't get discouraged. Again, you know, you're going to just have to figure out where you're at in terms of your math education. Now, if some of you out there um, are not math students, but you're maybe just uh, interested in relearning math or algebra. Maybe you took this way back in 1976 or 1965 or who knows, maybe 1983. 
and you're like, boy, I, I wish I would have understood this better. Well, check out my new course. It's called Math Skills Rebuilder. You'll find a link to that in the description uh, below as well. But in this particular course, I basically rebuild your math skills. I start off with basic math. I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and probability and statistics. So if you just like learning math and you really would just, you know, see if you can, you know, uh, master this stuff, which you definitely can, this is the course I made for you. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.